What's up guys and welcome back to Soft Finale Solutions and today we're talking about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Season 5 and its latest update which is the reloaded version and basically all its patch notes. Now today I'm going to show you what you can do with your machine, the config file which is the most important file we're going to go over today and everything you're going to need to do to get the best performance out of Modern Warfare 2. Let's get straight into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the first step I highly recommend you go ahead and do is open up the config file for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now you're going to go to the file explorer like this and go to documents, go to Call of Duty, go to players, and you'll see this file called options 3cot 22 and then open this up on any notepad or any editing software, anything you can edit with and type with inside this config file itself. All right, so how to find something inside here it's very easy and simple to do you just press ctrl and f and you can type what you are looking for now currently we are looking for the clutter so you're going to type in clutter just like that very easy to do you just type in clutter just like this and press enter you scroll down and then this is what we're looking for right over here right so this is the clutter draw distance okay now this is for your cpu and your gpu to do less rendering work in general to put less of a load on your CPU and less of a load on your GPU. So I highly recommend that you follow my steps over here. And I highly recommend that you do exactly as I do here. Now, as you can see, it says clutter max distance, right? Then it says equals. This is the value yours is going to equal. You're going to change that because yours is not going to look like this. And if it does look like this, then you don't need to change it, okay? This is the highest value. You need the lowest value, which is this one over here. Now, to shortcut this, you can just press Ctrl and C to copy it, or you can right-click and then say copy. Then what you're going to need to do is come inside here and delete the value that's inside here. Yours will be different. You're just going to delete everything that's inside here, and you can just press Ctrl and V, which is the paste for the shortcut, all right? Or, like I said before, for other people out there that's new to this, you just right-click and then you say paste, all right? And it will paste it inside here, and this is how it's going to need to look, okay? Now... The next thing that we're going to need to do, and I would say to type it in here to find it, but you don't need to because it's the one right under it, right? So it's this one over here. Plays a very big role in the game itself as well. And I highly recommend you go ahead and change this right now at this very moment. Okay, so as you can see, this value here is equal to this value here. Now yours might be completely different, and it will be different if you haven't changed anything in the config file yet, or you have changed some stuff, but you haven't changed the specific one. I would highly recommend that you just highlight this one over here, press Ctrl and C to copy, delete everything that's inside this one over here, just like that, and then press Ctrl V to paste this inside here. Now, I highly recommend you go ahead and do this because it can help with stuttering. A lot of people are complaining with stuttering and a lot of people are complaining about just in general a shit gameplay experience. This could change a lot for you. There's one more I'm going to do and it plays a very big role inside this game. It plays the hugest role inside this game is this one over here. And if you don't know where to find it, it's literally right at the bottom. But you can do this. You can press Ctrl F and it can come up as a search bar and you're going to say render. Just like this and press enter. Now, this is what we're looking for. It's this one over here. Threaded account for handling the job queue. Render a work account. This is what we're looking at right now. Now you can just close out of this. And this is what we're going to need to change inside here. If you've never done this before or you have, let me explain. Because a lot of people do ask me questions in the comments that I maybe don't go over. Let me go over them now. Okay. So, as you can see inside here, my value is 8 inside here the reason why i have the value as 8 is because i have an 8 core 8 thread cpu it's a 9700k so you're going to need to put your total cores inside here and yet again ladies and gentlemen no it is not half your cores so i put 8 inside here that's my total cores half would be 4 a lot of people say that you get more performance by halving your cores inside here and you can go ahead and try this um you can go ahead and try it and see if it does give you more performance if it does then obviously half it if it doesn't and you see a performance dip, then I recommend putting your total cores inside there. Now, something I just want to mention is this, because I get it through a lot of my comments. As you can see, the thread Q count can only go from 1 to 16. Now, if you have a 16 core, anything higher than a 16 core, like a 24 core, let's make an example, a huge example, which is a 24 core, like this. No, you are not going to put 24 cores inside there. Yes, I know I said you must put your total cores inside here, but the highest value can only be 16. So if you have 16 cores and higher as a CPU for Ryzen and Intel, 
the highest you can put it is 16. So you go ahead and put 16 inside here. Please go ahead and do that. Ladies and gentlemen, this can change your gameplay experience by a lot. By 30 to 40% increase in FPS and stability inside this game. I highly recommend you go ahead and do this. Alright ladies and gentlemen, before I jump into the next step, I would highly recommend that you know this that I'm about to show you right now. Okay, so let's go with a newer generation CPU for Intel or Ryzen, okay? The higher the CPU, you get stuff like this. You get performance cores and you get efficient cores, right? Now, to point this out there for a lot of people that ask me this question in my comments down below, yo dude, do I put the performance cores there or do I put these over there? What you're gonna do is you're gonna put your total cores inside there. But like I mentioned before, if your machine has 24 cores, the highest value in the config file can only go to 16. So if you have 16 cores or higher, you put 16, okay? That's how it works. Trust me, it will benefit you a lot. Now, something I just want to go over as well, the reason why I'm going straight over here is because the next one's right here as well. Okay, so this is the video memory scale. This is what you change inside the game, where you put your VRAM usage to 50 and then all the way to 90%. Now, as you can see, mine is at 0 0.90, meaning it's at 90% inside my game. You can change this inside here, and it will change it inside the game for you as well. Then you do not need to change it in the game. But I would recommend rather doing it in the game and following all my steps that I'm showing you right now. I'm going to jump into the game and also show you what you're going to need to do to apply all of this config files and the settings on top of it that you're going to need to be changing to get the best performance out of this game. So please, don't skip through my video, follow every single step that we're doing here. Now, if you change anything inside here, for instance this one here, a lot of people are talking about if you change this to false, you can get more FPS. Now you can go ahead and do that. You can just delete this, delete it, and type in false. Once you are done changing everything that you needed to change inside here, all right, you're obviously going to click on file and click on save and then close out of this, right? And there's your config file. Okay, now if you've changed something and you're not satisfied with the changes and you feel that the game isn't running better or anything like that, then there's a very easy way to work a way around this. You're just going to do this. You're going to go to options.3.2.2, right click on it and say delete. You're going to delete the config file completely and make sure to go ahead and delete it in your recycling bin as well. Once you open up Call of Duty, it's going to make a brand new config file for you and it will have its default values inside there. And then you can change what you need to change. And if you change something that you don't like at all, go ahead and not touch that again. Then only touch the things that you see that is working for you. Like maybe the total cores or the clutter draw distance. If you don't like those type of things, whatever you don't like, you can delete the entire config file and it will make a new one once you launch Call of Duty. All right, let's jump straight into the next step. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the next step I highly recommend you go ahead and do is this over here. You're going to go and download the latest graphics card driver for your graphics card. It does not matter if it's an AMD card or an NVIDIA graphics card. Please go ahead and check for the latest update. The latest update and the latest version for NVIDIA that I know of, because since I'm a NVIDIA user, it is 537.13. Please go ahead and download the latest version for your graphics card. As much as Call of Duty is updating, you also need to keep your machine and your components up to date as well. All right, let's jump straight into the next step. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the next step is in-game settings. And this is what I'm going to go over. Is this one over here. Display. It's the very first thing I'm going to go over because it has changed for the reloaded version. This is a couple of things that has changed in the reloaded version. Is this setting here, specifically, okay? Is full screen exclusive and full screen borderless, all right? A lot of people say that you have to use full screen exclusive. Right now with the reloaded version and all the updates and all the patch notes and everything, there's no physical difference between full screen exclusive and full screen borderless in FPS. You do not lose frames by choosing this one and you'll get more frames. And choosing this one, you'll get less frames. It's not like that anymore. You can use full screen borderless. The reason why you would want to go with full screen borderless is if you have multiple screens. I have multiple monitors. So I have one on my right hand side for Discord and one on the left hand side for my YouTube and my main screen for my game. So I would recommend if you have multiple monitors, go with full screen borderless and you'll have no impact on FPS whatsoever. You should be good to go. Now, something I want to mention is this to everyone out there watching this video right now. If you want an in-depth video, otherwise this video is going to be way too long. If you want an in-depth video, go ahead and click on the video here that I am going to pin up here or the video that's at the end of this video. Please go ahead and click on it and watch it. 
It is an in-depth video on Season 5 for Modern Warfare 2. The best settings you can use right now at this very moment. And to prove this to you, let me show you something. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so something I want to point out is this over here. My subscriber over here actually left a link of him using my settings with a certain type of machine. Now, as you can see, with all my thumbnails, it says 60 to 240 FPS, correct? A lot of people has mentioned in my comments, and I do remove them, saying, yo, dude, how the fuck would you go from 60 to 240 FPS? Is that even possible? Um, that's there for people that can achieve that FPS. If you got a fucking eight-year-old machine or 10-year-old machine, you won't even achieve fucking 80 FPS or even 60 in the first place. So don't leave stupid fucking comments. I just want to put that out there. I'm blunt, straight, open, and honest, but for the love of fuck, don't leave a comment like, oh, really? 62 fucking 240 FPS? Come, i show you something. Look here. This guy's using my settings. I'm just going to pause the video. He's using my settings with this specific machine. Okay? I'll actually fucking leave a like on his fucking video. All right? Because he fucking commented on my thing, and I'll approve it. I'm going to approve it now. Boom. Approved. Now, cool. Let me show you something. He's achieving 300 FPS. That's what he's achieving. 300 FPS with this machine. Yes, I know it's a 4090, but I have a lot of people commenting in my comments saying, yo, dude, I got a 4080 and I can't even get 100 FPS. This dude is using my settings. He's achieving 300 FPS. In fact, 309 FPS with using my settings. So I'm just going to play the video and just show you. This is what he's achieving. 297, 300 FPS. 280, 278, back to 290, back to 275. Yes, the game is unoptimized, so obviously it's going to get frame dips. Everyone's going to get frame dips in this game in general, okay? So I'm showing you someone that is using my settings with this specific machine. He used all my knowledge and made his game run fucking smooth. As you can see, yeah, his game is as running fucking smooth as possible, okay? Yes, you can, like I said, you're going to get frame dips. That's Call of Duty for you. It's an unoptimized game. As you can see, his enemies and everything is pink. Who made that suggestion? Me, in all my videos. I suggested to make it pink because it's easy to see your enemies in fucking pink. All right? So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, this is him playing. And this is him doing over 200 FPS with a fucking 4090. There's people complaining and saying that they can't achieve that FPS at all. Now, something I just want to mention is the video's quality in general does look a little bit shit. Yes, I know, I can fucking see that, right? Why? Because he only has 28 views. And if I right-click and say stats for nerds, his codec is in AVC1. You need to have over a thousand views for the quality to render incorrectly for your video. Watch this video. Please go ahead and do that if you're watching this video right now that I'm showing you. It goes in depth with everything. As you can see, it, the timestamps are here for every single thing that you're going to need to be changing. Please go ahead and do so. All right. If you right-click and you go to Stats for Nerds, the codec is now at VP09. That's the codec it needs to be to have very good quality on YouTube in general. Now, his video is not in that codec. As you can see, the quality is quite bad. But this is not the quality that he's looking at with his eyes. He's looking at this type of quality with that FPS. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see an in-depth video, you're going to go to this one over here. At the end of my video, it will be there. Ladies and gentlemen, if this worth you, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are new here. Leave a super thanks, which is a heart, which you can just do here. You click like this. You can click on this button to support my YouTube channel even more, and I'll really appreciate it. And I'll show you how deep the rabbit hole goes for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And I'll also show you how deep the rabbit hole goes for Modern Warfare 3. As always, peace out.